Parasites are ubiquitous. They're all over the planet. Everybody has parasites. You can assume it. About maybe 10, 15 years ago, I stopped testing people to find out if they had heavy metal problems because everybody did. I've never met anyone who doesn't have heavy metals. Okay, so why test? Why, why do that? Okay, but that's heavy metals. Parasites, the reason they're called parasites is because they successfully avoid being detected and killed. They're successful. So you're not going to find them. They don't hang out in our stool. They don't hang out in our, in our colons. They might show, an adult form might show up there, or you got some pinworms, they might show up there. But for the most part, in order for them to survive in the long term, they have to burrow deep into your tissue. So they'll burrow into the colon, the lining of the, of the colon, the bladder, lining of the bladder, ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, spleen, liver, and then lungs, brain. And then here's the thing. If you undertreat them, let's say you only use ivermectin or you only use fenbendazole, you disturb them and then they migrate to another organ like the pancreas and go deep in the pancreas and you wind up with pancreatic cancer. So the point is you've got to like blitz them. And that's why we use three, four or five antiparasitics and like three times a day for three weeks on, one week off, three weeks on, one week off. Okay. So how do you know you got parasites? Just assume that if you live on this planet, you have them. Because even the CDC in the U.S. says that 80%, they have a really big range. I think they are from 20 to 80%. That's too ridiculously large. People have parasites. The problem is they're not diagnosed. You can go into the hospital and give them your stool, give them five stool tests, and they won't find any. Because they're all sitting in the lining and deep in the tissues. They're not hanging out there because they need to have their larva and eggs uh, they need to have a nice place for them to live, a nest. And that's where they nest. They don't nest in your stool. So they're not easy to find. And I hope you understand that. You assume you do. Here's the other thing. If you take these antiparasitics, uh, one of the side benefits is that they um, turn off all the cancer pathways and they kill cancer stem cells. And we all have some amount of what we call chronically fermenting cells going on that they call cancer. We all have some of those going on in our body, either micrograms, milligrams or one gram or more. We all have them, all of us. Everyone you've ever met and everyone you ever will, will meet will have those. Therefore, by taking these, let's say you didn't have parasites, which would be maybe one in a hundred trillion don't have it. If you didn't, then what it would do is turn off the cancer pathways and kill cancer stem cells. So not too bad. So how do you deal with the fact that you probably most likely have parasites and you do not want to undertreat them? What we have found works and of course, you've got to get this from your doctor. So you've got to work with a doctor that can help you get these um, medications. But uh, what we have found works is if you use a combination of ivermectin, praziquantel, and some use either something called pyrantal pomoate, or you can use mebendazole. Mebendazole is like fenbendazole. They're in the same group called benzimidazoles. So you need one of them. So you need a benzimidazole, you need a praziquantel, and you need ivermectin. That will pretty much take care of everything. Now, that's all the worms, because parasites are either worms or single-celled organisms called protozoa. The thing that we know that uh, eliminates protozoa is something called tinidazole, which is like uh, metronidazole. You might have had metronidazole if you had, uh, well, for women, sometimes if you had gardnerella, or if you had, uh, what do they call that again? Um, you know that where, where, where there's a, a fishy odor? Well, and they give you that. It's called metronidazole. Well, it's a cousin of tinidazole. They're, they're in the same class. But they both kill protozoa. Now, there's another protozoa called entamoeba that is responsible for amoebic dysentery and things like that. But whenever we're taking out root canals or we're taking out, uh, we're cleaning out cavitations in the jaw from a failed extraction or something, and they, t they send the pus to a DNA lab, they're finding... I'd say I haven't found a case yet where there's no entamoeba. So not only are there all these bacteria in our jaws and our in our mouth, but there's also these these parasites called entamoeba in our jaw. That's what I would do. I'm not saying you should do it. I know you got to work with your doctor. You can tell him to call me and her to call me. We can discuss it. I'm happy, always happy to collaborate. But we use ivermectin, a benzimidazole, and um, the uh, praziquantel. That, that's like, that like gets them all. And then, of course, the tinidazole. The other thing is that we, we are, there's always funguses involved. So we add in nystatin and or fluconazole. 
and your doctor will know what all these are. And I'd be happy to collaborate, as I said. And you can always uh, contact me uh, on the website, drlotus.com, and we can set up a consultation with me and your doctor. Uh, or a lot of these are available online. There's, it's called, and another one is niclosamide. Because niclosamide can take the place of praziquantel sometimes. So it's really good, though, niclosamide. And it also turns off cancer pathways. And you go to niclosam.com. I think the only one that really seems to be hard to get for people outside uh, in America and Europe uh, is the ivermectins for some reason. The rest of them seem to be, you can, you can go online, uh, what's it called? Pancure, P-A-N-C-U-R dot com, and you'll get the fenbendazole for dogs, but it's still in the tablet form, 222 milligrams. And, you know, we usually, we usually tell our people 222 milligrams three times a day. Ivermectin, 12 milligrams three times a day. Praziquantel, 600 milligrams three times a day. Tinidazole, 100 milligrams three times a day. Fluconazole, 100 milligrams twice a day. Nystatin, 500,000 units three times a day. You should not, never do all this stuff on your own. And so I will talk to your doctor if you'd like. Three weeks on, one week off. Three weeks on, one. The one week off is to give your liver a break. Now, this is going to be bad for my liver. Indeed, it's going to be bad for your liver. Your liver enzymes are going to go up and then they'll go down. And then they'll go up and they'll go down. However, if you don't do this and you undertreat them, these guys are going to migrate and find their, and, and burrow in your brain, burrow in your pancreas. You don't want that. You want to get rid of them. So you do that. Now, remember the, about something about the liver. You can cut out two-thirds of it and donate to a sibling, and it'll grow back. The liver in humans is our lizard tail. It grows back. You pull it off, it grows back. So don't worry about it. If your liver enzymes go up, they'll come back down. The only time they don't is if you have hepatitis, but if you have hepatitis, you already know about it because you're sick and you're yellow and you don't have any energy and all that. But so that's why you need to really work with a doctor just so that you know you've done blood tests, you know what's going on and all that sort of thing. However, I never let the potential side effects of something that are not deadly get in the way of taking care of a problem we need to take care of. So you don't take your eye off the ball. So when we're working with people with cancer, and they're a little bit anemic and they're a little bit that. So what, I'm not going to treat them and just let them deteriorate? No, I'm going to treat them and deal with the side effects and deal with them as we can because we got to keep our eye on the ball. The eye on the ball is restoring health. Okay, and in order to do that, we have to get rid of the things that are interfering, which are parasites, uh, hidden dental things. You won't know it. It won't be red, inflamed. You had two tooth pulled, you know, when you were a kid. They were putting on your braces. They pulled out these. They first bicuspids. They pulled them out. You don't even remember. But um, they pulled them out, and they didn't get it all. They left little fragments. They didn't get the periodontal lig ligament. And then they didn't do anything but give you some cotton. And then you took it, it, you, So they didn't cover it up, and it got colonized. And now up in these bones that you don't feel, are there's a whole colony of mutated 20 year, 30 year later microorganisms producing biotoxins that are on some meridian affecting your, your body. You know, so that's why um, you know, a dental evaluation is very important. So in terms of dealing with somebody who's got chronically fermenting cells, you've got to be, do a thorough detoxification, which includes parasites, which includes dental infections, and then cleaning, just cleaning out the water in the aquarium, all that stuff. Then you can begin to heal.